All right, so let's go over question number one. Which function has a greater degree? We're supposed to analyze each pair of representations and answer each question and justify our answer. A polynomial function has one relative max and one relative minimum. You should be thinking of another word that describes the maximum minimums. That word is extrema. If I look at my formula sheet, I have the most number of extrema or turning points equals degree minus 1. So extrema equals degree minus 1. Here I have 1 extrema, 2 extrema. So I'm going to put in there 2. 2 equals degree minus 1. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Therefore, I have at least a third degree polynomial. On j of x, it says negative 10 times x plus 2 squared plus 15x minus 6x plus 2. Now, the long way of doing the problem is if you expand it, there's two of them, and then you would multiply those using a box, and then you would multiply by negative 10 and add 15x minus 6x and add 2. That's a lot of work. The easiest way is just recognizing that it's going to be x squared and a negative 10. So, yes, you're going to have a bunch of other stuff in the polynomial, but the highest degree there is a 2. So I'm comparing a 3 and a 2. Therefore, which one's bigger, greater? The left side is greater. A third degree polynomial is higher than a second degree polynomial, regardless if it's opening up or down. Question number 2. Which function has a greater degree? The first one you have uh, looks linear. And a lot of students think it's linear when you even graph it. Negative 2, 8. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0. 1, Oh, I did it the other way around. Try that again. Negative 2, negative 8. Negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and right 2 up 8. So it looks, it looks linear. But let's confirm that using our common difference. Here to here, I have um, plus 7, plus 1, plus 1, plus 7. Classes, do we have a first common difference? Is it linear? No. So it's not, not a first common difference, therefore it's not linear. Okay, let's try a second one now. From 7 to 1? Minus 6. To 1 to 1? 0. And then 1 to 7? 6. Do we have a second common difference? No second common difference. So is it quadratic? Not quadratic. Okay, this is new to us. Watch this. If I do a third one, what do I have? Plus six, plus six. So yes, a third common difference, which we've never talked about before. This verifies to us that this is something to a third power, which is called a? Cubic. So this represents a y to the x to the third power. That's what cubic is. It's to the third power. So graphing it gives us a visual, and doing the common differences kind of verifies that. All right, let's look at the right side. A polynomial function n of x that has one pair, that's all they told us, one pair of imaginary zeros. Now, if I draw n of x and imaginary zeros come in what? Pairs. Imaginary zeros come in pairs. Pairs is how many? And imaginary means it doesn't touch the 
x-axis. So it doesn't matter if you have a graph that opens up or down. This represents my pair. So what degree do we have here? This is x to the second power. So you're comparing a third degree polynomial to at least a second degree polynomial. Your answer is left or right side? The left is a greater degree. Uh, remember, as you're taking your test, I don't know, I might just take questions like this. It might give you the same exact one. I can also just cut and paste this picture and put it up here and ask you the same question. So at least hopefully you're familiar with how to think about the characteristics. Number three, which function has a greater number of real zeros counting multiplicity? <coughs> so I'm going to circle that word. Multiplicity might be a hint to us. Let's look at the graph one first. I'm going through here and I have four distinct zeros. Distinct zeros means like x equals a negative 4, x equals a negative 2, x equals 2, and x equals 4. But something I notice is that what does it do at those graphs? Does it shoot through or kiss? It shoots through. So shoot throughs are odds or a one, and a kiss is a two. So this is saying you have a multiplicity of one. So this is a one, this is a one, this is a one, this is a one. So this is one zero plus one zero plus one zero plus one zero. That gives you what? Four zeros. Four real zeros. So I know I have a fourth degree polynomial. The degree of the polynomial tells you how many zeros there are. Now on this problem, f of x says 3, that's a positive, right? Positive coefficient, leading coefficient, it's positive. So the arrows are going to stay the same. It's to the fifth degree polynomial, so this is an odd. So my arrows are going to be split like x to the first, the line. And then it has a plus 4, so it means it's going to be... Uh, transformed or translated to the left, add to x, go west or left. So there it is, 4. And then my arrows are going to start down and end up. And remember, we kind of learned that it comes a little bit flatter at those spots. Okay, this one only has one distinct 0. That's at x equals negative 4. But the degree of the polynomial is 5. Okay, it says counting multiplicity. So you count that. So it's not counting the number of dots or distinct zeros. It's telling you the degree, right? And so our answer is, which one's bigger, 5 or 4? 5. So the left side is correct. 